Church, are you glad to be here this evening? Once again, say thank you, Jesus. We thank God for bringing us this far. This is uh, the second time we are meeting in our 14 days of fastings and prayers. And uh, we continue to look at the word that God has given us through which I believe he's going to bless us all of this year. Um, the first quarter revival covers the entire year. And therefore, as I've been saying, let's all make sure that we hear all the time, every time, and uh, make the point to understand what we are saying, what the word of God is saying to us. And I believe the Lord will bless you and bless me too. So, the, the theme text, as you all know, the theme for the revival is um, cleansing or purging your conscience to serve the living God. Purging your conscience to serve the living God. And on Sunday, we explained what this means. What this means. So we talk about the blood of Jesus. Today we're going to look at we're going to look at the fact that gifts and sacrifices, gifts, gifts and sacrifices cannot purge your conscience. In other words, works, gifts, sacrifices are not able to purge your conscience or my conscience. And therefore, let's go to Again, the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews 9, we look at verses 1 to 10. Hebrews 9, 1 to 10. Hebrews 9, 1 to 10. Hallelujah. I'm reading from the NIV, the new international version of the Bible. Hebrews 9, verses 1 to 10. Now, the first covenant had regulations for worship and also an earthly sanctuary. A tabernacle was set up. In this first room were the lampstand, the table, and the consecrated bread, or the show bread. This was called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a room called the most holy place which had the golden altar of incense and the gold covered ark of the covenant. This ark contained the gold jar of manna, Aaron's, Aaron's staff that had budded and the stone tablets of the covenant. Above the ark were the cherubim of the glory, overshadowing the atonement cover. But we cannot discuss these things in detail now. When everything had been arranged like this, the priests entered regularly, church regularly, into the outer room to carry on their ministry. But only the high priest entered the inner room and that only once a year and never without blood which he offered for himself and for the sins of the people sorry and for the sins that people had committed in ignorance the holy spirit was showing by this that the way into the most holy place had not yet been disclosed as long as the first tabernacle was still standing. This is an illustration for the present time, indicating that the gifts and sacrifices being offered were not able to clear the conscience of the worshiper. They are only a matter of food and drink and various ceremonial washings. External regulations applying until the time of the new order. 
external regulations applying until the time of the new order. Praise the Lord. Beloved, after God had delivered the Jews from bondage in Egypt, he established his first covenant with them. He established a covenant with them. And as, I, as you know, a covenant is a very strong agreement between two or several parties. And every covenant has, has requirements and uh, blessings. The covenant will require you to do some things. And then when we have done those things, then you also receive the blessings or the benefits that are in that covenant. So covenants are always between two parties or three parties or more, but they always have requirements, things that each party has to do. And then benefits, blessings, that having fulfilled the requirements, you expect to get from that covenant. So God went into a covenant with the Jews, with the Israelites. And part of that covenant or that a tabernacle or a sanctuary had to be built, had to be set up. So God commanded them, so God who commanded them to build a sanctuary or a tabernacle. And the tabernacle at that time was a large tent. It was a large tent containing two rooms. It had an outer court where the Israelites would gather, a big space, and all the Israelites would gather. But there was this sanctuary in the corner of that place, which are two rooms. Two rooms. And the two rooms were divided by a curtain. Before you could enter the first room, there was a curtain, the first curtain. Then when you go through the first curtain to the first room, there was a second curtain before you go into the second room. So two rooms in the tabernacle or sanctuary. Now, the first room was called the holy place holy place. And the second room was called the most holy place. So, get the, get the architecture, get the plan. The first room was called the holy place. And then you go through a second curtain, second room, which was, second room was called the most holy place. And we're going to look at the significance of all this, the importance of all these things. Uh, why these rooms are described in detail in the Bible and how they apply to us now under a new covenant so that you will know how to have your conscience cleansed by the blood of Jesus so that you can worship God the way you should and therefore obtain from him mercy and grace, especially in the time of need. Check, clap your hands for Jesus. Especially in the time of need. Now, in the first room called the holy place, there were some articles. There were some things. There was some furniture. Furniture in the first room. There was a lamp stand. A lamp stand. A table called the table. There was the lamp stand and the table. And on the table, we had what we call the show bread. There was some bread that was placed on the table. Um, NIV said, consecrated bread. New King James said, the show bread. It was holy bread. And this bread was changed once a week. Once it was placed there, and no one was allowed to eat that bread. If we, if we turn that bread or ate it, you die on the spot. And it was changed only once a week. That was the first room. And that's why the Bible said that, um, you know, by faith. When you talk about faith, David and his men, they were hungry. David, before he became king and was fleeing from King Saul, he was hungry. He entered the tabernacle and ate the showbread. And he gave some to his, his men. And they also ate. And they did not die. So, you see, God understands situations. 
God knew that David was dying from hunger. And there was this show bread there. So David entered by faith. He wasn't afraid. He entered at the bread and gave some of the bread to his men who were not, they were not qualified to eat that bread. And they should have died on the spot. But they survived. They did not die. Church, may you not die and the Lord calls you home. Praise the Lord. Now, we go to the second room, beyond the curtain. When you go beyond the curtain, the Bible says in verse 3 that behind the second curtain was a room called the most holy place, which had a golden altar of incense and the gold-covered ark of the covenant. This ark contained the gold jar of manna, Aaron's tab that are budded, and the stone tablets of the covenant. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What does, it all, what does it all mean? Because later we're going to hear, we're going to find out that, know that now, uh, the ark, the ark was a copy. This ark we're talking about, so this tabernacle we're talking about, the tabernacle, the, the sanctuary was actually a copy of a sanctuary that is in heaven. The tabernacle that Moses was commanded to build was only a copy of a tabernacle that is in heaven. And therefore, all the articles in a tabernacle have spiritual meanings. They have spiritual um, benefits. They are not just there as furniture. No. So now, in the second room, the most holy place, the Bible says, first there was the gold altar of incense. There was a golden altar, altar overlaid with gold, on which the priest would go and burn incense. Now, incense stand for the proper, true, and accepted worship of God. Yeah, listen to me carefully. In the second room, the most holy place, there was a, a gold-covered altar on which the priest would burn incense. And the smoke of the incense would go out the Lord, and the Lord would smell it, a sweet aroma sacrifice. Sweet aroma worship. So, now, when you enter the second room, the most holy place, the first thing you see is a gold-covered altar of incense. And on this, the priest will burn incense. Now, this represents, this represents true, proper, acceptable, pleasing worship to God. Unfortunately, many Christians, our worship of God are not pleasing enough to God. They are not. So though we come to a house all the time, the way we come and the way we worship and some things that we are, they are not pleasing enough to God. So now, when the priests have burned the incense, representing true, pleasing, and acceptable worship of God, and church, may your worship be acceptable unto the Lord. We are talking about these things. Even the writer of Hebrews says that of these things, we cannot talk in detail now. But we are not talking about them in detail. Hello? The writer of Hebrews says, of these things, we cannot speak in detail now. But the details are, are some of the things I'm giving you. Then we had the Ark of the Covenant, which was a box. A box overlaid with pure gold. Pure gold. And in that ark were three things. So now, having gone past the altar of incense, worship and God has accepted your worship, then the next thing you see in the same room is the ark of the covenant. And in the ark were three things. First, there was a golden pot, a gold pot that contained manna. And you all know how God fed how God supplied food to Israel for 40 years, manna. Every day they will go and collect. Every day without, without fail. Without no disappointment. Now, manna therefore represents here, so that when you come before God, God supplies your needs. And may God supply your every need, church. 
The manna represents God's sustenance, God's supplies, God's provision. And this is part of the covenant. When you have, as, when you have worshipped the Lord the way you should worship him, then God will supply your every need. And tell may God supply your every need. Amen. Hallelujah. Clap your hand for Jesus. Notice it because they revival, when you get this in church, God will change your life forever. Amen. And may God change your life forever. Amen. And may Jehovah turn your life around because of the revival. So now, having offered acceptable, genuine, pleasing worship to God on the altar of incense, the next in the ark, and on that, in the ark, the golden pot or the gold pot containing manna, that, that represents that now God is now ready. Having received your worship, he is now ready to supply your every need. So you may never lack. Church, may you never lack. In the name of Jesus. Clap your two hands for Jesus. Have you understood that? Tessin, have you understood it? Mishakam, have you understood that? Then say amen again. Hallelujah. Now, the second thing that was in that uh, part of the covenant was what we call Aaron's, Aaron's rod. Aaron was a high priest, was a priest. And he had a rod. A rod. And we will look at this. For that, let's go to, let go to um, number 17. Number 17, 1 to 11. Number 17, 1 to 11. Numbers chapter 17, 1 to 11. The Lord said to Moses, Numbers 17, verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and get 12 stars from them, one from the leader of each of their ancestral tribes. Write the name of each man on his staff or rod. On the staff of Levi, write Aaron's name. For there must be one staff for the head of each ancestral tribe. Place them in the tent of meeting, that's the tabernacle, in front of the testimony, that the ark, where I meet with you. The staff belonging to the man I choose. So hear this. God said, The staff belonging to the man I choose will sprout and will rid myself of this constant grumbling against you by the Israelites. So Moses spoke to the Israelites. And their leaders gave him 12 staffs, one for the leader of each of their ancestral tribes. And Aaron's staff was among them. Moses placed their staffs before the Lord in the tent of the testimony. The next day, Moses entered the tent of the testimony and saw that Aaron's staff, which represented the house of Levi, had not only sprouted, but had budded, blossomed, and produced almonds. Then Moses brought out all the staff from the Lord's presence to all the Israelites. They looked at them, and each man took his own staff. The Lord said to Moses, Put back Aaron's staff in front of the testimony to be kept as a sign to the rebellious. This will put an end to their grumbling against me so that they will not die. Moses did just as the Lord commanded him. Hallelujah. Now, we're talking about, about the time when Moses was with the Israelites in the wilderness and there was a, a rebellion against him. The Jews or the Israelites started complaining against him. In fact, they were beginning to reject his leadership. They were, they were gossiping about him. They were criticizing him. They were rejecting him. Some were even insulting him. And uh, they were equating themselves to Moses. After all, we are all Israelites. Who said that you alone can go and get, you see from uh, all kinds of things. And then they, eventually, then they began to even Complain against Aaron. Who said Aaron is only, only Aaron is the priest? We are all priests, we are all Israelites. Which is something you see in churches today. Beloved, beloved, remember, 
Remember that God will always choose somebody. God will select somebody from amongst you. Not from heaven, not from anywhere, from amongst one of you. One of you, one of your kind. And then God will prepare this person, anoint him, that he might stand before him and before you. And beloved, people think that it is, it is a privileged position because some pastors have made it be so. They think it's, a, it's enjoyable when you are a pastor, when God has called you, they say, hey, you are favored. You are, it's just enjoyment. Lord, it's not enjoyment. It is not enjoyment at all. If I said that, hardly do, ask my wife, hardly do I go to bed before 2 a.m. Hardly. The earliest I go to bed is 12 o'clock. Every night. 2 a.m., 1 a.m., that's when I go to bed. And anything happened to any of you I see it as if it's happening to me. You, do, you may not know, but I get calls, Daddy, this, Pastor, this. It is not, it is not an enjoyable position. In fact, it's hard work, hard work, and many of you cannot do it. You cannot do it. You don't do it by your own strength, not by your own mind. You cannot do it. It is not a matter of fame. It is not a matter of money. It's not power. John the Baptist, the greatest of all the prophets, his, his uniform, his attire, was camel skin. John the Baptist, he was clothed in camel skin with a belt around his waist. And his food was locust. Locust. John the Baptist, who was the greatest, he just said he was the greatest of all the prophets. His, his, his attire, his clothes was camel skin wrapped around his body and a belt around his waist. And his food was locust. And he lived in the wilderness. And Israel will go to him. He didn't live in the city. These days, pastors have glamorized the ministry. They have made it look glamorous. They made it look uh, attractive, sweet. So that everybody now is going to ministry. Everybody is going to ministry because... They think that's where money is. That's where respect is. Pastor, 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 pastor. People who are nobodies going to ministry and then immediately they get respect and they are being called pastor, reverend, bishop, our bishop. People go and work hard and then bring them their money. Then they chop their money. That's what ministry has become now. Praise the Lord. But when you go to Hebrews, uh, I think Hebrews 5 verse, uh, Bible said that no one should take upon himself this honor. It's an honor, but it's a difficult honor. Except those who God has called after the order of Aaron. Except those whom God has called after the order of Aaron. So if the Israelites are complaining about Aaron and Moses, and God heard, God heard. Church, let it be known to you that in this church, I stand before God and I stand before you. I don't, I, I, I don't bend the rules to satisfy anybody. I'm not here, yes, I sympathize, I love you, but I will not bend God's laws to satisfy anybody. My first allegiance is to God, because he called me, and he's the one that I have to report to. And then, I pray that through me, he also bless you and bless me also. Church, and may God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is it. That's what ministry is about. So God got angry. God said, Moses, call the Israelites. Let each tribe, their tribe leader, bring a staff, a rod. A rod. Dead, dead branch. Not even a friend. Not green. Dead branch. A staff. Rod. That is dead. Let each one write his name on it. On his own rod. And then place the twelve rods in front of the ark. Next day, when Moses went, Aaron's rod, which was a stick, dead stick, had, had become not only blossom, had become green, fresh, hello, it has sprouted branches and leaves and produced fruits, almonds, all in one night. All in one night. And the rest, the, the 11 rod staff were the same. They were the same. 
But this God was showing them that, look, it is not, though you are all my people, everybody has a, play, a part to, to play. The priest or the, 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 the high priest or the pastor has a part to play. The person I've called, I've called. And they said, therefore, that, that means I will get rid. I want to rid myself of all the grumbling and complaints. Otherwise, they will die. The next, otherwise, the next thing I will do is I will kill them all. Praise the Lord. So, Aaron's rod in the ark represents lack of rebellion. You must not rebel. In this church, if there's something you don't like, please quietly go away. We will try and convince you. But if you don't understand, go away. You came by yourself and you are free to go. Hello? But for God's sake, don't complain. And don't insult me. Hello? Don't lambast me. I have not done anything. I have not done anything. All those who have left this church, they are all blaming me. What have I done? <laughs> they don't blame you or anybody. It's me that they blame. You know, I have not done anything. I, everything I do, I do, it, I do it out of love. Out of love. And the, the, the painful thing is that when members have done the wrong thing, they have done the, somebody has done the wrong thing, and then you point it out to that person, the person gets angry, and then decides to go away, and then continue to blame me for, for pointing out his or her wrong to him or her. Church, may it not be so in this church. So Aaron's rod, which had budded, a stick, dry stick, which in the night had become green, grown branches, leaves, and produce fruit, almonds. It's a sign that God, God hates rebellion. God hates disobedience. God hates gossiping about each other, about your leaders, your choir leader, your uh, instrumental, instrumentalist leader, your, you know, don't grumble. Don't, if you don't understand anything, come. We'll explain to you and then we'll all understand what is going on. But don't insult, don't grumble, don't complain, and don't destroy the name of the church. God hears everything. Praise the Lord. And when you do that, you cannot serve God. That means that your conscience is not purged. Your conscience is not purged. And your service will be outward. It will be outward. It will not be pleasing to God. Hello? The next thing, of course, the third thing was the tablets of God's commandments. Represent the God's word. God's word. Just say the word of God. Say the word of God. It is impossible, impossible to stay away out of church for any length of time. When you don't hear the word of God, say, don't you feel dry inside of you? Don't you feel dry? Oh, maybe you have not all done it before. But if you like, stay, stay away from church for one month. We'll see how you feel. You see that you have become you dry. Then even coming again becomes difficult. When you stay away for some time, now to come back becomes difficult. But when you keep coming here in the word of God now, you, now you begin to love the word of God, you begin to look forward to the word of God, you begin to enjoy it, you begin, when you hear it, it's like sweet, sweet honey, sugar-coated honey to you. Hallelujah. So that, that, was, that was the word of God. So three things. The manna representing God, provision, God blessings. Aaron's rod, that body representing God's hatred for, re, for rebellion. God's hatred for, for, for disobedience, uh, gossiping, and bringing down his church. And of course, the tablet that contains commandments, and that is for the word of God. Church, clap your two hands for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, on top of this ark, there are two cherubim, angels, one side and one side facing each other with their wings spread over the, the ark. Cherubim. And between the cherubim, that's what we call the place of atonement or the mercy seat. The area between the cherubim on the cover, the cover of the ark. That's the cover of the ark. That area was the mercy seat or the place of atonement. And that's where God will appear. The glory of the Lord will appear. God will appear there on the ark between the cherubim. That's why we say God who dwells between the cherubim. God will appear. 
Hallelujah. Just, may God appear to you tonight. Every time you go there, may you dream and see angels. Clap your two hands for Jesus. Now, how did God appear? The Bible said that in the first room, the holy place, the priests, the priests will go regularly. The priests will go there regularly to perform their ministry. But in the second room, or the second room called the most holy place, only the high priest, only the high priest will go there. And he can, you could only go there once a year. Look at the conditions. Only the high priest, number one. Two, he could enter only once a year. Once a year. And three, before he could enter, he had to sacrifice animals. Use their blood to cleanse, purge himself. And then purge the Israelite. And then he would go there with the blood, with his blood, into the most holy place. So three conditions. And if the, the priest made a mistake, well, then he will not come back. So it is said that in those days, when the priest was going, they would tie a rope. They would tie a rope around his waist. But they are not sure that he will come back alive. And if he doesn't come back, nobody can go there to bring, that, to bring his body out. So they would tie a rope around his waist. And if they see that, oh, he wasn't kind of, they, would pull, they can only pull him out. But you cannot go there. Anyone that entered will die. Hallelujah. Clap your two hands for Jesus. Now, when we go back to our text, Hebrews 9. <laughs> Hebrews 9. Let's take from verse 6. When everything had been arranged, Hebrews 9, verse 6. When everything had been, had been arranged like this, the priests entered regularly into the outer room to carry on their ministry. But only the high priest entered the inner room. And that only once a year. And never without blood. Which he had which he, which he offered for himself and for the sins that people are committed in ignorance. Now, the Holy Spirit, verse 8, was showing by this that the way into the most holy place had not yet been disclosed as long as the fair tabernacle was still standing. This is an illustration for the present time, indicating that the gifts and sacrifices being offered were not able to clear the conscience of the worshiper. We come to a very important part in our revival. And this is it. By this arrangement, the Holy God, the Holy Spirit, was showing to everybody through our generations that as long as the first tabernacle was still there, with all these ceremonies and restrictions and qualifications, the way, the way to God, the way that you and I can go to God had not yet been opened. It was closed. The way was closed. As long as this, this thing was there, tabernacle or sanctuary was there, with the high proof, the blood and so on, God was showing to all generations that the way to God, before you can go to God, there was no way. It was closed. Closed. You can't go to God. When the high priest can go there, and once a year, then he will go and get whatever you need from God, the tabernacle, mercy, and then bring it out to you. Praise the Lord. Church, have you gotten that? So now, it means that if you and I lived in those days, you couldn't go to God. We had to wait a year for the high priest to go before God in the most holy place and come out and sprinkle you and give you what our blessings you can get. That is it. You have to wait for one more year. That is it. Hallelujah. But now, things have changed. Things have changed. Holy Spirit telling you and me that the way to God was closed. It was closed. No way can get there. 
But now, things have, things have changed. Things are different now. When you look at verse 9, said, This is an illustration for the present time, verse 9, indicating that the gifts and sacrifices being, and sacrifices being offered were not able to clear the conscience of the worshiper. Now, what this means was that all that happened, the high priest sacrificing, cleansing himself, uh, blood and so on, was still, not, was still not enough. Not enough to allow the people to go into the most holy place. No. Stay outside. They should all stay out. Stay out. Stay far away. Then the high priest will go and get and bring to you. It didn't matter. It didn't matter how many animals you sacrifice, how much blood the high priest will go into the most holy place with. It was still not enough. The way to God was still close, close to everybody. So then, how do you, how do you get this out? How do you get this system out? How do you now, you and I? come before God without having to go through any high priest or sacrifice animals. How do you do that? Because God wants you to come to him. And you want to, you need to go to your God. You need to go to him. But the way is close. Hello? Couple of two hands for Jesus. And this went on for centuries. It only not just one week or two weeks or even one year. For centuries, hundreds of years, this was the system. This was the system that was prevailing. Hmm. The gifts and sacrifices, the Bible said, they are only a matter of a sin. They are only a matter of food and drink. Food and drink. And various ceremonial washings. External regulations applying unto the time of the new order. The gifts and regulations, what were they? they were only like food and drink. Food and drink. And various washings. Uh, just wash yourself. Wash yourself. External, external regulations, external things, ceremony. People will see you doing it. But spiritually, they were meaningless. Meaningless. That's what we're saying here. But these things were, for, for that time, they were okay. Why is Waiting for a new order. You know, when I look at this scripture, I say, hey, look, those days, people were doing these things. That's all the available. But they were waiting for the best, the, 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 the perfect thing to come. In the same way that you and I today, in this, gen, in this our generation, in our generation today, we are not reached the end. We are still waiting for the Lord to come. We are waiting for the Lord to come. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, in those days, OT days, whenever the high priest entered the tabernacle, all Israel will be waiting outside, waiting for him to come out. And he could there for a long time. They had to wait with their eyes on the entrance. Hello? Are you with me? They will stand there and wait with their eyes on at the entrance because the high priest has gone in there and they are waiting for his coming out. They won't sit down. They won't sit down. They will stand. No chairs there. They will stand with their eyes glued to the entrance. And they'll wait and wait and wait and wait. The high priest will go in there, burn the incense, sprinkle the blood, then God's glory will appear between the cherubim. Then God will do what, say what I have to say. It could be there for a long time, but they will still have to wait. All of Israel. Then when the high priest came out, came out, walk out, it was a time of joy, peace. Then they know that they have been cleansed. Hallelujah. In the same way, you and I, we are expecting Christ to come back. Christ, our high priest, will, will come to that as we go, other days go by. He has entered a sanctuary. Christ has entered a sanctuary not made here on earth, not with the hands of men. He has entered into a heavenly sanctuary 
on our behalf on our behalf and he's going to come again just as the high priest came out of the sanctuary so is Christ going to come back and therefore you and I God expects us if we want to worship him well we must be in a mood of expectation waiting for Christ's second coming church are you with me hallelujah therefore if you're a Christian and you don't do things as if Christ is not coming back unbelievers don't think Christ is coming back in fact there are many in the world now who think that Jesus is not coming back they don't think that he's even God they don't believe in any of these things but if you begin to think the way they think that means that your conscience has not been purged by the blood and therefore you cannot serve God God will not accept your, your worship God will not accept your service so you and I must spiritually keep our eyes fixed on the entrance of the tabernacle waiting for the high priest to come out and our high priest now is Christ Jesus shall I say my high priest is Christ Jesus and in the same way as the Jews will stand they won't sit down they stood and, and watch you and I must also not sit we must not relax and in all that we do where well, all that we go to people we move with everything remember that God is watching you to see whether you have actually your eyes fixed on the heavenly tabernacle check up your two hands for Jesus therefore we must be sober we must be vigilant because our adversary, the devil, he knows all this. The devil knows all this. The Bible says he's seeking whom he may devour. When he sees that you, your Christianity is just, is just superficial, you don't know what, what you are doing, then he devours you. Devours you. He can just devour you. But when you go to the book of um, Romans 14, Romans 14, sorry, Romans 14, um, Romans 14, verses 17 and 18. Romans 14, 17 and 18. The Bible says that, um, are you there somebody? Romans chapter 14, Romans 14, 17 and 18. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, enjoy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. You know, God is not giving up gifts, sacrifices, ceremonies. It's not ceremonies. Not ceremonial. It's not going through uh, methodical things. But it's righteousness, peace, joy, in the Holy Spirit. Just say in the Holy Spirit. And anyone who serves God in this way is pleasing to God. Pleasing to God. Hallelujah. In other words, you're serving God in spirit and in truth. You have your conscience, your soul purged. So you, you, you're not looking at the situation around you, but you're walking by faith. You are not being, you are, you are, you are, you are not being led. By, by the flesh, but you are led by the Spirit of God. Check up your two hands for Jesus. So we say that when Christ entered, he came into the world, when he came into the world, he sacrificed his own blood. His own blood. Or he sacrificed his own body and used his own blood to enter the presence of God to atone for the sins of all believers and to open the way Christ opened the way for them to enter directly into God's presence. That's why when, when Christ died, the veil, the curtain, that separated the first thing was, was ripped apart. And everybody outside could see, for the first time, those outside could see the covenant. They could see the Ark of the Covenant. They could see the, the gold in, uh, uh, incense altar. And they didn't die. Before if you saw it, you died. But the moment Christ died on the cross, Bible said the veil, the temple was torn to 
were torn apart. And everybody could see for the first time. And since that time, they could all see God's presence in the Holy of Holies. Check, clap your two hands for Jesus. Give the Lord a, a much better clap offering. Sometimes, you see, some of these things, you have to, in your quiet moment, sit down, meditate, read the scripture, and think of it. If you were to be living in the old, old 20 days, or what we are seeing now, what you are hearing now, you, you know them. In fact, you, you, you know much. But now, now we stand, we are in the last dispensation, we stand in a blessed position. We are in the last age. There have been many dispensations. We are now in the last dispensation. After this age, there is no other age. Christ coming will put an end to this age. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about New York. Don't worry about Kra Kumasi. Don't worry about uh, Sugar Kope. All these, all the places come to an end. Don't worry about uh, Chicago or, Tor or Toronto. Don't worry. Hello? Yeah, they look like mighty house, mighty city, you know, New York, Toronto, you know. All this will come to an end. They all come to an end. Because Christ is coming again. Coming again. You're going to come out of the, of, of the sanctuary. And then all that he has said, there shall be a consummation, fulfillment of the covenant. Clap your hand for Jesus again. So, in the same way as Christ's blood... Christ's blood had power, significance to open the way for us to go, everyone, to go into God's presence. Christ's blood has also the power to prepare your heart, prepare you. Because it cannot, even though it's open to everyone, God's presence is open to everyone. It's not all who can go there. Unless Christ's blood has been sprinkled on your heart. That your spirit, your soul has been purged. Then you can approach the throne of grace with boldness. Boldness. That you may obtain mercy. When you need mercy, you can go there and you get the mercy. Because there's a mercy city there. The mercy city there. So when you need mercy, you go there and God will give that mercy. Praise the Lord. And when you need grace, you go there with boldness, you get a grace. You get a grace. May God give you mercy and may God give you grace. In the name of Jesus. Clap or two hands for Jesus. What does this all mean? What does this all mean? We are here, we are human beings. We are now, we are men and women. Now, this place is a sanctuary. A sanctuary is a place where God dwells. Wherever God is in his holiness. God is everywhere. God is everywhere. But there are some places that God has chosen to dwell in his holiness. Where his power is. Where his presence is. And that's where he is worshipped. You cannot go to community one uh, what was the name? Amis Akunde. You know Amis Akunde? And go and sit and say you are worshipping God there. No. God has chosen some places where his person dwells, his holiness is, and there's, uh, there's a sanctuary. And a place of God, God's house, sanctuary, that's where God is. There was church. Now, hear me, hear me well enough. When you come here like this, later we gather together, that's what someone said. Do not forsake the assembly together of yourself. Next time we come together, like this, we are not just come as a club, society, as a group. We have come into the most holy place. Imagine, you think of it. The reality is that you have now entered the most holy place. Hello? And that's why you cannot go by the same as you came. And when you come here, <laughs> no evil spirit can follow you. No adversity can follow you. You have come before the presence of God. Remember, that's the first thing you need to know. 
Therefore, as you come, how have you come? Is your worship acceptable to God? Altar of incense. You, when coming here, is your worship acceptable to God? Or God will reject you? You don't know. But make sure that you are coming here, your, the incense that you are going to burn, that incense is acceptable. It's a sweet aroma to God. And then when you come, you have come for the presence of God. Then the thing that God has, the blessing that God has in his covenant, they shall all be your portion. Praise the Lord. Healing, deliverance, promotion, financial breakthrough. Are you being church? You can name it. Name the blessings. But you first must satisfy the requirements. The requirements. And since God called me, since God called me, every time I hold a meeting, every time I go to church like this, I know that I am in the presence of God. I've come to the most holy place. And therefore, I expect that I and you will also live here, not the same as you came, but you live here with that blessing that you need so desperately. Are you being church? So don't take, if, if you have this mentality, then you will not want to miss any meeting. No, 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 no. You will not want to, in fact, you will even be here early. You will be here early. You will not come late, but you will be here very, very early, early enough. And then whatever is happening, you take part. Take part. Because you know that the longer you stay in God's presence, the more you get. Hello? Yes, yeah, see then the chick, the chick, baby hen, the chicken that follow closely behind the mother, the hen. It is that chick that eats the grasshopper's thigh. You know, the grasshopper's thigh, very, very juicy, very sweet. The chick that is always close. When the, when the mother, when the mother hen catches the grasshopper, you know, it doesn't discriminate. The one closer to it, the one who gets the, the grasshopper star. So if you follow Jesus as Paul was following him, you always you always eat the fat of the land. Hallelujah. And may you all eat the fat of the land. And God doesn't leave us, He doesn't leave us guessing. He doesn't leave us, you know, speculating, wondering. He leaves us with confirmation. Confirmation. God will always give, leave us with evidence that we have come before him. And that is why I'm saying that since I was, every time I come before God, I was minister. I always minister. Hardly will I hold a meeting without ministering to your knees. And I don't know what your knees are, my daughter. I don't know what your knees are. Stand up for me. But God knows. I don't know what your knees are, but God knows what her knees are. So all I say is that, Lord, I pray thee, meet your daughter at the point of her every need. Bless her, bless her, bless her by supplying her every need. Praise the Lord. Oh, give the Lord a better clap of faith. Mr. Ajima, come. My prayer is that Mr. Ajima will live to over 100 years old. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Over 100 years old. So I say, Lord, I know that he's well advanced in years. But Lord, it is you who called him. May you grant him to live to over 100 years. Amen. 100 years. 100 years. In the name of Jesus. He was going to go down. You're going to go down, so just help him to go down. Esther, come. Esther, may Lord grant you live to 120 years plus. Come forward. Come forward. In Jesus' name, my Lord and my God, 
your daughter here, keep her in health. Keep her strong and healthy and fit. Let her live to 120 years and beyond. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Check, clap your hand for Jesus. She's going to go down. She'll go down. She's going to go down. Hallelujah. Why you go down? Just help her to go down. In the name of Jesus. Don't try to push her up. Just help her to go down gently. Remember many years ago, early in my ministry, there were two sisters. Two sisters. And uh, I was praying for the two of them. The Holy Ghost came upon them. One was here, the other one was there. And they were swooning and, you know, getting... Then I said, well, God hears prayer. So I said, I said for the church, listen. I said, Lord, let the two sisters, as they fall down, let them come and fall down side by side. One, and the one was here, one was like here... And they went round, 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 round. And they came and fell one on each other side. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Beloved, this evening, you have come before God. Remember that. You are in the most holy place. Whatever your needs are, may God supply them. May God purge, cleanse. May Jesus purge, cleanse your conscience, your soul. So your worship, your worship, your service may be pleasing and acceptable unto the Lord. In the name of Jesus. My daughter, come. So this job I speaking the word. I just spoke the word. And God confirmed it. There are different ways that, that we minister. Different ways. In Jesus, I know that my hands are very hot now. I just have to do this, daughter, in Jesus' name. Take the anointing. Take. 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 And uh, as the Holy Ghost comes upon her, and the Holy Ghost who searches, searches all things, even the deep things of the Holy Ghost is able to even search the things of God. Think of it. The Holy Ghost knows in the things of God. So, he will then search her. If there's any sickness in her, he will heal her right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. If she has stepped on any toothpaste, it will not harm her anymore. Yeah. And if there's any need in her life, the Holy Ghost will begin to supply that need. In the name of Jesus. John, come. There are only a few minutes to do this. In Jesus' name, in the same way, son, look at me. Look at my hand and take. There are different ways and it's the same God. Clap your hand for Jesus. Now, the Holy Ghost comes upon him and uh, that's God's presence upon him. Spirit of God is upon him. And therefore, God cannot come upon you and then go away without doing anything for you. God cannot just touch you, feel you, and then leave you the way you were before. It's not possible. Hallelujah. God bless you, my son. Suzette. Uh, I mean, stand behind her. Somebody stand behind the two of them. Yeah. So, Suzette and Abib, two of you together, in the name of Jesus, may God, right now, Holy Ghost, touch them and meet them at the point of their every need. Now, 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 in the name of Jesus. This time doesn't matter. But God fill the entire universe. The entire universe. Gifting. Is that gifting the green dress? Gifting. Yeah, my daughter stand. And the Holy Ghost. Touch her. 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 In the name of Jesus. So this can only happen when you are 
in the presence of God. Church, are you with me? <laughs> this can only happen when, in fact, God's glory is where you are. Josephine, do you agree with me? Okay, then stand up. Do you agree with me? Yes. Therefore, as you stand there now, God is looking at you. God knows everything about you and God is preparing your blessings. Very soon, they shall all come to pass. So, daughter, take, 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 in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Sarah and Salome, come. Two of you. As you come, the Lord knows what your needs are. Just, just walk past here. And before you get, before you get there, the power of God, just walk past here. Move on. Before you get there, the power of God will touch you. Before you, before you go far, the power of God will touch you. And when God has touched you, then consider yourself blessed. Church, when God has touched you, consider yourself blessed. Uh, are you with me? Oh, I didn't hear your amen. Put your hand God for Jesus. About two weeks ago, I gave birth to a new daughter. I gave birth to a new daughter and a son. I think the daughter's name is Elizabeth. Uh, is it Elizabeth Corte? Is she Elizabeth Corte? Come. That's my latest daughter now. And Isaac, is it Isaac uh, Ajay? Or, or uh, huh? is it Isaac or what? NS Ajay, yes. He's my, my latest son. Come. NS, come. You know, when we come here for the first time, I, I, well, we receive them, but many are those who cannot stay. Many are not able to stay, so I don't commend myself to them. But as I see that they are faithful, then I begin to recognize them as my sons and daughters. Ernest, in Jesus' name, my prayer, the Lord will fill you. As you come before him regularly, you see, then his blood begins to purge you, prepare you, prepare you, prepare you, the two of you. And the time will come, then your coming here become pleasing to him. Pleasing to him. Because when you come from outside, you come with all kinds of things hanging around you. Then God begins to wash you, cleanse you. It can take a little while. But as time goes on, then your coming here becomes a sweet aroma to him. And then begin to put his spirit on you. But I, I, Ernest, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, give me your right hand. May the Lord fill you tonight. May he fill you tonight. Fill you. Holy Ghost, I may touch your son. Touch him. 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 Don't, don't touch him yet. Touch him. Touch him. Holy Ghost, more of your touch. That if it's your will, that he may fall out the anointing. That he may know that Lord, you have touched him in the name of Jesus. NS, J, GBM, J, 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 In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. It's getting began. I don't have time. It's coming. It's coming. Check. Clap your hand for Jesus. Um, Elizabeth, eh? Elizabeth, caught him. You heard what I said. The same thing applies to you. Yes, it's only about two or three weeks now. Uh, may you begin to receive. 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 Don't touch her yet. Don't touch her. If you touch her now, you cut, you cut it off. Leave her. Take. GBM. J, I'll tell you when to, when to go there. J, 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 J. Take my daughter. Holy Ghost. Touch your daughter. Fill her with your spirit. Yes, yes, yes. Let her live here happy that she too has been touched. She also, even she has been touched. Daughter, GBM. In the name of Jesus. Check up your hands for Jesus. It is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we all blessed this evening? Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. And that's why, you know, I find it hard to believe that somebody who is here can stay away from church for one month, two months, three months. Not in Hano. 
and when you give, I don't accept excuses. When I say, oh, that did not mean yare. Three months. In fact, you make me laugh and you make me sad. Sad and laugh and, 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 and at the same time. You cannot. You can't. So this revival may the blood of Jesus purge your conscience. May his blood purge your conscience to serve God in the name of Jesus. We have five minutes left. Five minutes. Anybody here who who wants a touch? Is that a Paul? Paul, oh, come forward. Anybody who wants a touch? We have five minutes after. When five minutes are there, we stop. Quickly. Anybody here? Lord, as your children come, sprinkle the love Jesus upon them. Sprinkle, oh Lord, your blood upon them. Holy Ghost, your blood upon them all. And you may purge their conscience. Purge their souls. To serve the living God. And they may serve you. Serve you. Serve you. Serve you. In the name of Jesus. As you come, what about your knees, sir? Keep, keep talking to you about your knees. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, oh, fill your daughter with your spirit. Pair your conscience. Lord, this is Helena. Helena, your daughter, you know her by name, Lord. Pair your conscience. She I come before your throne of grace. Stand before your throne of grace. Yes, that she may obtain mercy and find grace to help in this time of need. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Holy Ghost, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Ye mama mama. Reba ka sulubu ka biya. Sheba baya. Reba ka seya. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Holy Ghost. Ye mama rama kurubu sabiya. Say mama. Rebecca. Say mama. Daughter, take. Receive the Holy Spirit. The Lord will purge you. Cleanse you. Yes. Of any acts leading to death. To serve the living God. Serve the living God. Serve the living God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. For use. For use. Yes. Augustina. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ye mama mama. Reba kase ya dobo. Ke mama ya. Reba so ya dobo ya. Yes. Daughter. Receive a double portion. Double the portion. Double the portion. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The Lord, you may meet at the point of their every need. The point of their every need, Lord. Every single need of theirs. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yeba baya reba kase ando. Kema mama mama ya Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.
soles under your feet, the Lord will heal you. The Lord will pour out healing anointing, healing power upon you now. Healing anointing, healing power right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive your healing. Yes. Receive healing. In the name of Jesus, take your healing now. In the name of Jesus, take your healing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Anybody, any visitor here this evening? Any visitor? What will be wearing some hand there? And then on your vampire. Before we pray, we want to. Any visitor here this evening? Any visitor? Will be an any first time. Tell let me on our feet. She baba. Now we're going to pray some five minutes. Um, those of you here, my left hand side, we're going to pray that the Lord will purge everyone's conscience in FCAC. The Lord will purge every conscience in FCAC of dead acts so that we can all serve God very, very well. Here, yeah, that's your prayer. The Lord will purge. And we all can serve God very well. Here, your prayer is that the Lord will fill us all with the Holy Spirit and give us wisdom to understand His Word and His ways. The Lord will fill us all with His Spirit. Give us wisdom that we will understand, comprehend His ways and His Word. Here, God will grant God that God will grant answers to our personal prayers as we serve Him. The Lord will grant us answers to our personal prayer. In fact, here these two same topic. The God will hear us and grant us answers to whatever we ask Him for. If we ask according to His word, now begin to pray. Begin to pray now. Talk to God now, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this meeting. Thank you for tonight. We thank you for being now. We have come to your most holy place. We have come to your sanctuary. The Lord, my presence has come before you. As you have done, burning incense. Give us your manna, Lord. Lord, give us your word. Pray the Lord you will pay every conscience in this place. Holy Ghost, let every conscience be paid. Every person we pray so we can all serve you well. Serve you well. Grant you all our unblemished service in holiness, spirit of hope, and in truth. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we fill us all with your spirit. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Lord, the Holy Spirit give us wisdom. And I send the word of your will. I send your word of your will. I am 
someone you love. Personal prayer for yourself. Ask God what you want God to do for you. Pray again for someone else that you love. You know the person has a need, is in trouble, that the Lord will deliver, heal, or bless that person one way or the other. Church, open your mouth, begin to pray. For yourself and for someone else. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, yes, 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 Holy Ghost, we're coming for you with our personal, our personal supplication, our supplication. We make our supplication to the Lord. Oh, my God. 
the way that you're doing. Right now, it's small. Small. But the Lord will make it big. Grow it. Expand it. Make it big. Bless you, family, and the church. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will enlarge your hand, anoint your hand. Customers, profit, will come to you innumerably. In the name of Jesus. Okay, my wife. Only mine. And Odin, I cheated on my own. I saw that. Odi, Odi, Helen, I saw my own. Sorry, that. What's it? More near Helen. She only got two points. Near, near Helen. Amen. Oh, church, I'm blessed today. Clap your hands for Jesus. Let's take our friends now. Go no Helen, no my son. You didn't cheat on so my sorry. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
the name of Jesus. 